Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q4 FY23 earnings conference call of SH Kailkad and Company Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anup Pujari of CDR India. Thank you. And over to you, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for joining us on SH Kailkar and Company Limited's Q4 and FI 2023 earnings conference call. We have with us Mr. Kedar Vaze, full time director and group CEO, and Mr. Rohit Saraugi, EVP and group CFO of the company. We will begin the call with opening remarks from the management, following which we'll have the forum open for a question and answer session. Before we start, I would like to point out that some statements made in today's call may be forward-looking in nature, and a disclaimer to this effect has been included in the earnings presentation shared with you earlier. I would now like to invite Kedar to make his opening remarks. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. We have reported a stable performance despite the significant challenges uh, we faced during the quarter. As I mentioned during our previous call, I outlined key issues and shared the action plans moving forward. I'm happy to report that some of these actions have been implemented and has resulted in notable recoveries in areas which were adversely affected during quarter three FY23. Now I would like to provide you with an update on these issues and progress we have made in executing this plan. Our global ingredient segment she continues to face significant cost pressures and had an adverse impact on the competitiveness in the global market. To tackle these issues, we have taken measures to implement a total backward integration project in India and are currently in the final stages of securing local sourcing for the essential raw materials. As we progress with the ramp up of local sourcing for the coming quarters, we anticipate a positive turnaround for this segment in a strategic way going forward. Here I would like to share an update on the ingredient plant in China, which was part of our business continuity plan. Due to the underperformance of this segment and considering the uncertain geopolitical situation and dependence on China, our board has made a strategic decision to not make further investments into the country. Consequently, we have decided to impair the plant and machinery, uh, which is located in China in our accounts for this quarter. The one-time issue in flavor segment witnessed in quarter three was also successfully resolved. The business has resumed, and as you can see in quarter four, the momentum on the flavor business has been high. Uh, furthermore, our CFF European business impacted in first half of 23 has regained traction with cost optimization and synergies between Holland and uh, Italy operations, which we have been driving through the year. With this performance, the board has recommended a final dividend of two rupees per share, which I am happy to uh, say is highest in the recent past. As we celebrate also the momentous milestone of 100 years of our company's history in this fiscal year, let me take a moment to reflect upon the journey so far. This significant achievement is a testament to our commitment to delivering exceptional fragrances and flavors to consumers worldwide. Throughout our journey, we have consistently pursued excellence, embraced cutting edge technology, fostered enduring partnerships with our valued customers and suppliers, despite and suppliers. The challenges we have encountered in the recent years uh, are transient and our firm belief in the potential of our business continues to drive us forward. Through strategic measures and focus on our long-term goals, we are confident in our ability to achieve improved results for our company in the years to come. In conclusion, despite the modest near-term outlook for the domestic FMCG industry, our active involvement in the global FMCG positions us to exceed industry growth 
in our core fragrance division. The strength of our existing client and expanding global presence should help us achieve sustainable business growth in the near term. On that note, I now request the moderator to open the forum for any questions or suggestions that you may have. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Ladies and gentlemen, a reminder, if you wish to ask a question, please press star and one. A question comes from the line of Bharat Gupta with Sair Value Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, Kedar. A uh, couple of questions from my side. So uh, when we look at the overall, like in terms of previous, we have definitely cleaned out momentum. Just wanted to check what has been like uh, in terms of consolidation, what would be the revenues and the EBITDA contribution which is coming from L, uh, from our organic acquisition, in organic acquisition. So you are talking, you are talking about, about flavor? Only flavor or combined or... Uh, so no, I'm talking with respect to flavors only. Yes, yeah, so the uh, flavors, uh, as you know, the uh, acquisition was in the space of uh, uh, QSR and derivative flavor business. So this has uh, seen a strong growth with a large marketing spend which is corresponding to the growth. This segment, uh, the EBITDA level has been... Uh, uh, rather muted, but we have been investing heavily in the growth. So we are talking about ballpark uh, six to seven percent EBITDA in the acquired business. Uh, the balance is the uh, EBITDA from the other. And in terms of the demand, so how are you reading like the domestic demand scenario across the previous segment? Now, the demand in the food and flavors has been uh, strong. We have continued to see the growth. We have uh, in the quarter three, like I mentioned, some uh, deferment of uh, export orders and then uh, the sort of quarter on quarter results will keep changing based on the uh, supply and the, the logistics of the export orders. So there is the, you know, in a full year we are doing uh, normal growth but on a quarter and quarter, there will be ups and downs when the order is going. Sometimes there are two orders in one quarter. Sometimes there is one, one order in one quarter. So there is a significant 7-8 crore swing in the, uh, uh, in the uh, overall uh, flavor contribution quarter on quarter, purely based on the logistics and uh, demand scenario of the export. Okay. Also, uh, when we look at the raw material situation out there, so like when we are hearing that Chinese trades are once again coming back in picture, and there has been an ease in the raw material prices. So how, uh, like at the same time, we are also integrating with respect to global ingredients. So how uh, do you see the margin going forward? I'm just speaking with respect to the gross margin. So are we looking that there will be definitely an ease in terms of gross margin and there will be a, some sort of an improvement going forward. So uh, we expect that the gross margin to be stable and improve in the future. I don't want to uh, guess very uh, far down the line because the volatility in the raw materials has been very high. As a trend, what we see today is that the raw material prices are stabilized and uh, they more well for us to have a stable gross margin or slightly improving gross margin. Uh, particularly in the European context, we would expect gross margins to improve, uh, but we also have a caveat that the operating costs have also risen due to energy costs going up, particularly in Italy. So there will be some uh, increase in costs and uh, uh, increase in gross margin both. But at the beta level, we expect it to be a good uh, year going forward. 
uh, what kind of a growth are we envisaging uh, in terms of EBITDA as well as in terms of the document? I think we are, uh, quarter four is a good representative uh, quarter for the overall results in terms of EBITDA and uh, margin and so on and so forth. If we look at uh, this uh, quarter in uh, trend of April, May and you know, this, continu this trend continues to hold, it should be clocking 12% growth and uh, stable EBITDA margin. Uh, margin in a range of 15%. Yes, right. Uh, the quarter four uh, means we will be at that level or slightly better. Right. Also, uh, with regard to the RFPs, like you mentioned in the last call, that there were RFPs of the deal of digital P and D through. So, what has been the situation? Uh, like, have we been able to get any rewards from the from the customer itself with regard to any RFP? No, we have uh, made all our submissions. We have, as we talked about, 300 odd crore of uh, business potential which we are making. I have, uh, submissions of more than 100 crore potential business annually has been made. We see that these are uh, uh, progress is happening. We are also seeking uh, more feedback from the client on the way forward, and we will uh, revert back in the, when we have more. So, uh, the same. At the as of with now, regard, from last quarter. With regard to S524, a hundred crore indication the top line can be can be booked in the in the earnings as such. It it's early to comment on the full year. We are on track in terms of our submissions, but we see some uh, Changes in the in the uh, environment, and we are waiting for feedback from the clients. Right. In the global intermediate space or the ingredient space, what kind of a capex do we envisage with regard to the pathway integration capabilities? We will uh, work with uh, partners in uh, in the Indian aroma in the Indian chemical space. So we are not envisaging very large capexes. Uh, most of the uh, backward integration projects will be run in way of uh, supply contracts. So the the uh, existing capacity on on the chemicals uh, industry in general, with the aroma chemical or petrochemical or aroma chemical industries, we will use. Uh, reliable partners to supply us the raw materials. And uh, when we look in the global in ingredient space as well, so uh, like what kind of a cross margins do we see or a better of in terms of cross margins with respect to the domestic sourcing? Any improvement over there? And also with regard to the availability of the raw materials, uh, like with, the, with respect to the domestic sourcing, so are we comfortable that 100% can be procured domestically? Yes, so we are, uh, we are, uh, as I mentioned in the opening remark, we have exited China. We have closed our plant there. We are extremely confident to make all the raw material available within India, and uh, all the projects, uh, internal development, everything has been completed. Project is uh, on its uh, execution phase, and by end of the year or second half of this year, we will have completed. Uh, to the global ingredient business. Uh, also, if you look at the Italy subsidy uh, CFX, so, uh, like, how do you read the overall scenario when the headwinds are, uh, when say it, it is sustaining out there in the developed market? So, how confident are we with respect to our European operations? Very confident. I think that the surrounding the uncertainty are now part of their business. So, customers. Consumers have accepted that uh, this is an inflation the risk. So no panic, it's business as usual. And we see of our exports and uh, Italian and European. Right. Um, so overall, on a top line, we, are, uh, we anticipate that it will be a 12% kind of a growth with a, with a stable margin going forward in the federal course. Yes. Okay. Uh, that's it from my side. Thank you for answering the question. And the global ingredients as the negative uh, 
beta situation improves through the year, uh, that will be incremental. Uh, so, in global in ingredients piece as well, uh, do we anticipate a break even like how in terms of the beta going forward in the second So, we will be very strong uh, in terms of our uh, margin and beta after the second half of this year, once our integration project is uh, fully implemented. And uh, we see good signs uh, already in the market from uh, uh, from the uh, global ingredient momentum. Okay. Right. Uh, that's it from my side. Thanks, Kida. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to ask a question, please press star and one. Our next question comes from Ganesh Shetty, an investor. Please go ahead. So congratulations sir, for completion of 100 years of business. And it is a pride to every one of us being a shareholder that you have completed 100 years successfully and with the best name in the industry. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. And the best wishes for the future also. So my first question is regarding the debt level now. We are at around 470 crores of debt. And over a period of time, you know, we, are, we wanted to reduce the debt. But uh, do you see any strategy going ahead in reducing the debt level, sir? So I think uh, from uh, operations, uh, so I would divide this into two parts. One is the operating operating cash flows and the investment outlook. So I think the operating cash flow wise, the debt reduction is happening. We can see that month on month and uh, quarter on quarter. However, I think this uh, next six months, we will have some investments in our Indonesia plant, our second tranche of uh, uh, acquisition, or uh, Holland Aromatic acquisition, plus uh, outflow in terms of dividend and so non-operating cash flow, there will be certain uh, load in the first half of the year. So the debt level should steadily come down after a small blip because we will have these investments and outflows in the first half of the year. But we will be around the 500 crore and then subsequently go down uh, from there. Thank you, sir. My second question is uh, regarding the, our inorganic acquisition. Over a period of time, we have done a lot of acquisition, but uh, at the same time, our revenue is not uh, uh, increasing uh, uh, accordingly. So I can understand that there were a lot of micro macro headwinds were there, but uh, going forward, uh, what would we see our inorganic strategy where whether we are done with it uh, and uh, we are trying to uh, rationalize our operation, then uh, trying to go for any further acquisition, or we are still hoping for that. So, on the inorganic strategy, while we talk about uh, overall growth, we are seeing that the inorganic or acquired businesses have indeed done well, and we have continued to see momentum and growth. We have had challenges on more on our traditional uh, stable business uh, within the uh, smaller clients in India and that uh, that momentum is now being addressed and getting uh, recovered. So we will uh, continue to have a mix of organic growth and inorganic growth in our longer term strategy. For the medium term we are looking at consolidating, ensuring that our results are uh, consistent at these levels, stabilize at these levels and then we will look at future uh, uh, inorganic strategy. Thank you very much, sir. That's all. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to ask a question, please press star and one. A reminder, if you wish to ask a question, please press star and one. Our next question comes from the line of Amit Kumar with Determine Investments. Please go ahead. 
Yeah, very good afternoon to the team. Uh, so uh, to begin with, uh, this repeating question, uh, you know, for this particular quarter uh, on a standalone and consolidated basis, what has been our uh, you know, price in uh, growth and uh, volume growth? Uh, can you repeat the question? It's yes. not audible. Yeah. Just, just give me one second. Is this better now? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the question you are asking is, uh, you know, uh, for this particular quarter on a standalone and consolidated basis, what are your price and volume growth? Uh, breakdown of revenue growth between price and volume, really. So the volume was relatively flat, and the growth was led by the price growth. Okay. Okay. And uh, so that means, uh, you know, uh, there is. I mean, you take a price increase on an annual basis. Uh, so uh, you know, uh, are we sort of anticipating any sort of, I mean, because, you know, uh, raw material prices have gone up, uh, you know, during the course of the year. Um, so are you sort of anticipating any sort of price hike uh, uh, in future? Have you sort of already, uh, you know, taken that in January? So our, uh, by and large, uh, there will be always uh, small exceptions, but by and large, the price uh, costs have stabilized. Uh, there will be uh, some uh, element of price increase following or flowing through which was contracted and uh, the new contracts begin uh, in the next year. So the price increase will only come in the quarter one. But uh, wherever the price action or the commitments to the clients and uh, both ways on the supplier contracts and the pricing contracts for the clients, these actions have already been taken. Uh, we will continue to see some price increases uh, flowing through into the accounting as the uh, contracts uh, start to, uh, I mean the old contracts complete and the new contracts begin in the subsequent year contracts which will start from the first quarter. So there will be, in, uh, you know, in the business there will be some price increase in the first quarter of next year, but after that uh, we, we don't anticipate any uh, further price action. Uh, in terms of current outlook of the raw material. If the outlook of raw material changes, we will order uh, uh, accordingly. All right, understood. So this 12% uh, uh, you know, revenue growth uh, that you are anticipating for next year, I presume it would be substantially driven by volumes. Yes, 8 to 9% volume, 3% price is uh, yeah, but I'm, I'm just a little bit surprised by that because, uh, you know, honestly, uh, you know, when, we sort of, when you're talking to your clients and at least, uh, you know, on the domestic SMCG side, uh, we still don't sort of see any signs of, uh, you know, 8 to 9 percent kind of, uh, you know, volume growth um, as far as the SMCG companies are concerned. I mean, you know, it's been 2 3 percent maybe, uh, you know, looking at a little bit of improvement as yeah, they, as you rightly pointed out, inflation has gone down, so probably a little bit more push-up in terms of volumes and uh, you know discount. Uh, I think the, uh, the commentary will follow. We are seeing the signs in the cost side and the way the momentum, well, what they are talking about in their uh, public statements and the recorded numbers. We are seeing the momentum at the small clients. The bigger clients will see this in few few months and it will start to drive the business growth. But what we are also seeing is a lot of new businesses, particularly uh, sort of e-commerce brands and smaller brands, which are doing well, and we are seeing growth uh, on that uh, front as well. So it's not only the established large FMCG that are growing, but new entrants are also growing in this market. Uh, we also expect to get, gain market share from uh, our competitors in this uh, year, as we have very aggressive account plans and. Uh, specific targeted uh, business plans. Okay, and uh, I missed the initial commentary. I joined the call a little bit late. Uh, probably you talked about uh, you know this closure of the China plant. Uh, so what's the what's the broad sort of rationale uh, you know here? The China part plant was part of our global ingredient business unit, and we we have decided to not further invest in China. So we are. Uh, we have taken an impairment charge on that and uh, we will keep it as an idle plant. Uh, in backward integration for all raw materials has happened in, uh, is happening in India, so we will get, uh, get fully backward integrated by end of the year and dependence on China will be very small after.
this does not impact uh, you know your ability to uh, you know service your existing client base and you know in terms of uh, you know any sort of so impairment charges would be would be non cash whatever you know something that you have done but any any sort of uh, you know cash impact or uh, you know impact in the business going into fiscal 24 correct sorry no impact you are saying no impact okay great thank you that's it for mine thank you ladies and gentlemen if you wish to ask a question please press star and 1 A reminder: If you wish to ask a question, please press star and one. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Thank you. I hope we have been able to answer all your questions satisfactorily. Should you need any further clarifications or would like to know more about the company? please feel free to contact our team or cdr india thank you once again for taking the time to join us on this call thank you thank you on behalf of sh kelkar and company limited that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines